Mr. Average Hockey Fan here, and I'm here with a recap of last night's game between Detroit and Montreal. Go Habs, go. Uh, tr Montreal won last night, 3-2. to two. Very, very good game. I was pumped. I definitely had a big woo for Petrie when he uh, scored that goal in third. That was great. His dad was there. His dad looked so happy at the end of the game. That was great to see. When I first seen him, I was like, who is this guy to keep going to? And then I, 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 put, I wasn't listening to it with the sound up because I had my daughter here. So I was trying to like watch what I could of the game. And uh, I kept seeing him go to that guy. So I was like, who is this guy? And then all of a sudden I, put, I looked at him. I put two and two together. I seen him right after Petrie scored and went right to him. I was like, that's Petrie's dad. It has to be. Turned, on, turned up the volume a bit. Sure enough, it was. At the end of the game, he looked pumped. He was high-fiving people around him. He looked like he was going to get a bit emotional, but I don't think he teared up, not from what I've seen. Anyways, let's get into the game besides that uh, really good moment that I liked there Petrie's dad at the end. Um... The shots from the, the score was three to two for Montreal. That's how it ended. The shots were twenty five for Montreal, thirty two for Detroit. The goals in the first period there were none. In the second period, the very first goal was a very greasy goal by Galli where he was down. He uh, got knocked down in front of the net. There was three Detroit players in front of the Detroit goalie, and Galli just whacked at it like he was like swinging for the fences, baseball in his butt, bang into the net. I was lo I was hoping it was going to be goaltender interference challenge, and when they showed the replay right after he scored, I was like, that's good for sure, for sure. That's a good goal. Uh, the second goal was Armia from Domi and Ben. I must mention that to know. Tatar and Dino had the first assist on Galli's goals. Tatar made a really good play to get it in and uh, get that assist going. The second goal was from Armia, from Domi and Ben. Uh, Armia had a really nice wrist shot. He got open in front. The puck came to him. It, it, it looked like someone was going to clear it or something, and the puck came to him in front of that. Bang. Domi got, his, Domi got his hands on it, flicked it over to Armia. Sure enough, top corner. Gorgeous, gorgeous goal. Uh, and the third goal of the game, was from Apodiceo for Detroit, who had a really good game, having him at toes. I thought that guy was going to get the hatch of goal in the third to hide up, send it to overtime. But I know Detroit does struggle out wins, and we have a really good record. Montreal 7-0 in Detroit now in their past seven games. Uh, so, yeah, he scored. I was uh, He scored from Glenn Denning. It was a pass from Glenn Denning. Uh, but, yeah, he really, really... He really had me going that game. I thought he was going to get that hat-trick goal. He was going to tie it up, maybe go to overtime. I didn't think he was going to get four, but maybe be in on the overtime goal or make something happen. So he was. it was kind of had me worried for sure, especially with Niemi in net, because Niemi was in net. But he was solid. Not not a bad thing to say about Niemi. I was very impressed with his performance myself. Just like his last performance in Dallas, lights out. Great job by Niemi. Uh, third period, Petrie scores first from Tatar. It was a really, really nice goal. Like I said, his dad was there. He went right to his dad. His dad looked so happy. It ended up being the game winner. No one was sure at the time if it was going to be the game winner because how close the game was. But it ended up being the game winner. So go Habs, go. Love that. Love seeing Jeff Petrie score. And uh, a bit later in the third, about, I think there was like five minutes left, something like that, six minutes left. Happy to see you got a goal. I don't know. Wasn't great. It was all right. I got nothing. Nothing bad to say about the guy, but he had me on my edge all night. I've, he was driving me nuts, is what he was doing. He was driving me nuts. And uh, the penalties were Della Rose had a penalty. By the way, Detroit was 1 for 5 on the power play. Montreal was 0 for 2, as usual. They've been struggling a lot lately. And the penalties were Della Rose had a penalty in the first. Deneau had a penalty in the first. Cronwell had a penalty in the first. Weber had a penalty in the first. Cockney or Weber had a penalty in the second, excuse me. Cockney had a penalty in the third. I always kill that name. Cockney sorry. And Tatar had a penalty in the third. Tatar's penalty in the third looked like it was going to be costly, but it wasn't. And he looked so relieved when he got out of the box. I was so happy for him. The hits were 17 for Montreal, 25 for Detroit. I got to mention, Cromwell was crushing people. He had a huge hit on Gallagher. I was so happy to see Gallagher get off from that hit because Cromwell has put dudes out with hits like that before. Look at his highlights on YouTube. They're like all hits. It's sick. He has a couple nice shots too, but he has like hits upon hits, highlight reels for days. He's an old school dude like that, and he if he catches you with your head down, he will take you out, suspension or not. He's taking you out. And I uh, had some game notes of the game. Uh, Osner was a scratch, of course. I was really surprised to see Shapu as a scratch, but Houdon hasn't played in eight starts apparently, so he, they had to get Houdon in there to see what he could do, and Houdon played really, really good in my opinion. And also, Delorier was a scratch. It was it was surprised to see Delorier as a scratch too, but Delorier beats in some games, out of some games. It depends on the style of team they're playing and what you need. If you really need that toughness there, we didn't need it against Detroit. It was pretty obvious we didn't need it against Detroit. And uh, my game notes were 
Niemi was solid. Niemi was great. I got nothing bad to say about Niemi. He's been great his past few starts. He looked shaky before that. He had me a bit worried because previous to his shakiness, he was he's been pretty pretty consistent. I wouldn't rely on him down a stretch. I wouldn't want Terry Price to get injured and have us to rely on Emmy for any more than ten or fifteen games. If he went more than ten or fifteen games straight, I, it's almost like I got a feeling he'd fall apart because he's a guy who who seems to struggle with his confidence a bit. Uh, that's just from what I see, from what I've seen over the years, from what I've seen in Chicago, from what I've seen in Dallas, from what I've seen against teams he played for and played against. But when he is on his game, when he's feeling you see that smile on his face behind the mask, he is dope. Um, the D was great for Montreal, not allowing shots in front of the net. There was a lot of loose pucks in front of the net that popped out in Montreal. Pretty much all the time cleared them. They made most of the choice shots to choice come from the outside. Most of them weren't dangerous. Miami made a few good saves, but most of the shots Detroit had weren't dangerous. Weren't what I call uh, scoring chances, legit, legit scoring chances. Some they could sneak by weaker goalies, but not an NHL goalie. Uh, also, Crime was really good. Uh, I think Shaw would have helped tonight. If Shaw was playing, I think Shaw would have been a big part of this game. Shaw always is good in Detroit games. I remember last year when we beat him 10 to nothing. I was I seen Shaw score, and I was like walking to my friend's house. I had my notifier on to see if, because I was on the way to watch the game at my friend's house, and I just caught a bit in the first period. And I had my notifier on, bang, Shaw scored again. He was awesome last year in Detroit, and I'm pretty sure he, was, he had a goal this year against Detroit in the Detroit game, if I'm not mistaken, but he's always good against Detroit. I think if Shaw was on the ice, it would have been a whole... It might have been a 4-2 game, 5-2 five, two, five, two game, something like that. I think Shaw would have been effective, would have got a goal or two, especially the way you can play in front of the net against Detroit. Galley showed you can get them goals, and Shaw is a beast at getting those in front of the net. Dirty, greasy goals, but he can get them for sure. Uh, Larkin was super fast. Larkin completely stood out to me. Byron is super fast, but Larkin even looked like he had an edge on him. Larkin just looked faster than every single player on the ice. Every time the guy had the puck, I was like, man, this guy is... Uh, absolute beast. He's he's rocking it up the ice. He could probably beat Connor McDavid one on one skating. I'm not saying that, but man, oh man, those are two guys. When you watched him play, it sticks out how fast they are. It's like Carl Hagelin from New York four years ago when I was watching Carl Hagelin in the playoffs. How fast he looked. I don't know if it was just he had his gears going for those playoffs, but he was so much faster than everybody else. It was crazy, crazy, crazy. The New York series against Montreal. Haglin had three breakaway goals that short series, I'm pretty sure, and he created them all with his pure speed, just getting by guys, blowing by guys. By the time he got to the blue line, he was all alone, coming in a breakaway, amazing, amazingly fast, amazingly fast player. Um, but Larkin, Larkin is definitely that fast, if not faster. Uh, Tatar it had played. It was his return to Detroit in Montreal. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. If, I don't think they played in Detroit before, but it was return to Detroit in Montreal. Tatar definitely. People were giving him the gears when he had to puck at certain points in the game. But uh, he has 222 points in 408 career games for Detroit. So he was definitely a very big part of their team. He definitely contributed a lot to Detroit. And Detroit fans definitely should have respect for that guy. Great player. And he's doing it in Montreal. It's great to see him doing it in Montreal, too. Sure, he had a little bit of a rough stint in Vegas. But they didn't really give him a chance. They took a top six guy and instantly like put him into like their third line sliding. He didn't get the time he needed. He didn't get to play with the players he should have played with. So he would have been a lot better if they had to have more confidence in him, in my opinion. Um, also, Montreal is back in the playoffs after this win. It doesn't mean they're guaranteed to stay in there, especially if New York wins their next game. New York has uh, three games in hand on Montreal. They're one point behind Montreal for that wild card spot. And uh, the other teams that Montreal are chasing, Buffalo and Boston, both won. Buffalo won four to nothing over the Wild, and Buff or Buffalo won five to one over the Devils. Excuse me. Boston won four to nothing over the Wild. And New York lost 4-3 to in Carolina, and thank God that they didn't lose it in overtime because that would have mean they would have kept their wildcard spot because they do have those games at hand, and Montreal would have been behind them, tied for the wildcard spot, but with New York having those games at hand. But instead, Montreal is now one point ahead with this win, and you win New York losing. So that's a big, big deal if you're following the rankings, which I am, following the standings, I should say, which I am. I'm getting confused with my UFC standings and rankings. I always do that. My bad. But uh, that's my thoughts on the game. That's my game recap. Hopefully you liked the video, and hopefully the Habs win their next game. It was really, really brutal to see them lose the last game to Nashville. That was brutally bad, and their last game before that, like, it's just, I can't stand seeing them lose two or three in a row, especially with the way things are as tight as they are. They need to keep it going because the teams around him are hot. Buffalo has fell off a little bit. Boston's won five in a row, if I'm not mistaken, in New York. This is their first loss in a while because New York has been killing it. So, yeah, we really, really need to stay. And I also made a video saying yesterday that I think uh, 
Washington is going to finish third. I don't know, man. I seen Columbus and Washington playing yesterday. I might have been off on that assessment, but it's going to come down to Washington and Columbus for that second and third. Either one of them are going to get. I still think Columbus is going to finish ahead, finish ahead of Washington. Don't ask me why. I just do. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm just saying, from what I've seen from Washington last night, they looked a hell of a lot better than what Columbus looked. But that's just one game. Sometimes teams have those games. And throughout the year, like, I would have more faith in Probovsky than what I than what I would hope be or whoever else Washington has in it for sure. Even though he did have that playoff run down the stretch, Probovsky is a really, really good goalie, elite as they come. Uh, that's my thoughts on the game. That's my thoughts on the games around the league. My game notes. Hopefully you like the video. If you do, like and subscribe. Drop a comment. Would sure love to shoot shit about NHL. Have a good day. Enjoy your day.